What's up everybody, JJ here, and today we're gonna to be upgrading my Voron printer with a G10 build plate. And we're gonna be upgrading our G10 build plate with a magnetic sheet. Hopefully all of these things work together to improve on the Voron. That's been a big point of issue I've been having with the Voron is getting things to stick to this. This is a flex steel PEI coated sheet. One side is smooth PEI and the other one is a textured PEI. And I don't love it. I don't love it as much as I've loved the G10 that I put on my Anycubic Mega S. I made an entire video covering using G10 build surface and I've loved it ever since. Long term review, it's still printing great. It's printing right now on my Anycubic Mega S. It does such a good job at holding on to materials when it's hot and then releasing materials when it's cold and giving you that really good mirror surface finish. I know some people like the textured feeling on their prints that a textured surface will give it. But personally, I really like that mirror finish if you can get it easily and G10 lets you get that very easily. I've also really wanted to try out putting a magnetic sheet onto the build plate since there's already a magnetic sheet that I've put on here that allows this spring steel plate to stick in place. But if it works well to put a magnetic sheet as well onto the build surface, we could use a mirror, G10, whatever random build surface I wanted to try out. I could create several of them and then swap between build surfaces as I wanna test out different things. That's why I got a sheet big enough. I can cut this into four equal parts that will all fit into this build volume. That's one big benefit to having a small form factor printer. I can really prototype and test things because it's so much cheaper when you're using so much less material. I feel like my biggest issue with the PEI coated sheet is unreliability. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, and I haven't found a good way to keep it clean. With this, I just use some isopropyl alcohol, a simple wipe, and it keeps working great. But if you do have a great working method for using a PEI coated sheet that's reliable, I'd love to hear from you. Let me know in the comments down below. But for now, I'm just gonna move to this because I know it works well on my other printers. So the next thing to cover is materials for this. There's really only two things. This is a white G10 plate. It's five inches by 10 inches by a 16th of an inch thick. That way we get a little bit of flex, but it's still fairly rigid. I bought this one at jantssupplyknifemaking.com. I will link it in the description down below. I also have this blue sheet and I got this one at popsknifemakingsupply.com. Again, I will link it in the description down below. There's a lot of fun colors and I'm really looking forward to having a white build surface on this white and teal printer. I think that'll look great. The gold doesn't really go with the theme of the printer. So that's another big benefit to moving to G10. You can use any color you want. Then this flex plate is an easy flex squared by th3studio.com. They say it's good up to 140 degrees Celsius and it's got a genuine 3M sticker on the back. So hopefully we should have good reliability even up to high printing temperatures. If that spec is correct, we should be good to go. The next thing you'll need is some way to cut your G10. Unless you buy it cut to the correct size, it's kind of difficult to cut and will probably tear up most supplies you use. I'm gonna be using a hacksaw today. I found online some people were saying that's a great way to cut this. It is critically important we do talk about safety if you are gonna be cutting this. It will create ultra fine particles. This is fiberglass and epoxy resin together. And so it will create ultra fine particles as you cut it using most cutting methods. So do this in a well ventilated space, wear a proper mask for it. It is very dangerous and your health is most important, especially if this is a hobby. A hobby is not worth risking your health for. So just be careful if you're gonna be cutting this. I'm gonna be doing it outside on the driveway, but if you have a deck or porch somewhere on the sidewalk even you can go outside to, will be better than doing this in an enclosed space. So now that safety is covered, we can go on to cutting this. I will be cutting this down into two equal parts. On this, since five inches is just about 128 millimeters, I'm gonna be cutting it right at 128. That way we will have eight millimeters extra on each side. I would recommend when cutting a build surface like this, leave a little extra. I messed up on the one on my Inacubic Mega S where one of the corners is a little bit shy. Luckily, I do have a BL touch to do a mesh bed leveling, but I do think the bed isn't as level as if I could put that clamp in that corner. There's our general line. Now we can take it outside and get to cutting. So this is the hacksaw I used. It's a 24 tooth hacksaw and it did struggle to get through there, but I finally did make it through. It didn't make the cleanest line, but that's fine. I went back over the edges with a 240 grit sandpaper. Also took off the corners because the corners can be pretty sharp. 
and you just don't need sharp corners on your print bed. It is also worth noting your tools you use to cut this. Since it is fiberglass, it is very tough. It will probably dull any tools you're working with, so don't dull a tool that's really, I don't know, sentimental or something. Just know this will dull most tools. So that hacksaw blade might be spent after cutting through these. So I am gonna be using the spring steel plate since it is the correct size and sticks to the magnet so well it'll stay in place and make scoring the magnet really easy. When peeling the 3M adhesive off the back of the magnet, do a little section at a time moving along and pressing it down really firmly as you go, making sure there's no big bubbles under there. It doesn't need to be perfect, but being careful can help reduce mistakes. So now that we got the magnet stuck to here, it doesn't fully cover the edges, but this is large enough to cover the entire magnet there, so we should be getting full adhesion. And installation should be a breeze. Magnets are great. They hold everything in place. It's in there and it looks great. The magnetic force here isn't as strong as it is on this steel plate. The steel plate just seems to hold on really well, but hopefully this is strong enough. There are a few things that could be working against us here. There is that extra layer of magnet in there, so hopefully we can get enough thermal conduction through that magnet and onto our G10 plate to get it up to a good temperature. The biggest test of that will be if I can get consistently good results of ABS and ASA on this build surface. But as far as looks go, it looks so good having a white build plate in this printer. I'm so excited to get printing on this. But now for me, the easy part is done. Building it was fairly simple and straightforward. Benchmarking it would be a whole different thing and takes a lot longer. If you enjoy this type of content and want to support me, hitting that like and subscribe button down below really helps me out and helps me keep making videos. So now, it's time to get printing. So here we are day two and benchmarking went way faster than I thought it would. It only took me a second try with both materials to get a successful print. Teal is ABS and purple is ASA. On both of them, I did the same thing with the first test. I can tell which one was the first one. With ABS, it succeeded the first time, but it still had some curls on the edges. This was kind of my torture model I used since it's large and flat and has all these sharp edges at the edges of my letters. So I thought this would be a really good test of a bed adhesion. And with the first try from a cold printer, I just said, go ahead and start printing. So it gets up to temperature and then starts. But there is a reason why it's pretty common to preheat your printer before printing these high temperature materials. And on this second one, I preheated it up to 100 degrees Celsius on the bed and left it there for maybe five to 10 minutes and then said, start print. And on that one, it turned out great. All the corners turned out just perfectly. This mirror finish on here looks so good. I'm so just kicking myself over leaving this for so long with the PEI coated sheet. It was making me not use this printer since I couldn't get reliable prints out of it. Now, this beautiful glass surface on the bottom here, it's just amazing. Very similar results with ASA. I have never been able to get good ASA results out of this printer. And with the first one, it was the same thing. It started curling, but that's because it was from a cold printer just telling it to start. With the second one, I let it preheat again for about 10 minutes and then told it to start the print and it turned out immaculate. All the corners are perfectly flat. The initial layer went down so well. It's glassy finish here. It's just that this was something I was never able to do before. Either side of the PEI coated sheet, textured or smooth. But now the second try with this G10 build plate and I'm getting amazing prints. I'm just so glad I've now done it. I think this is such a worthwhile mod for anyone who spent the time to build this printer spending an extra, it's about $20 of materials for this. The G10 plate I think was about $10, and with that you get two full ones so I can swap them out really easily. I do like this 16th inch build plate since there is a little bit of flex there. You could flex off materials if they stick too hard on there. The magnetic sheet, if you're only getting one, I think you could probably find it for about $10. This one was closer to $20, but now I have four separate ones I can use on here, which I'm really excited to use on other materials in the future. Also, that white build plate just looks so good in here. The next upgrade I am planning to do on here, I already have ordered an Orbiter V2 extruder to replace the mini afterburner extruder that comes on there. I feel like I have been getting inconsistent extrusions out of that extruder, so hopefully this should really take this printer to the next level, making amazing prints out of it. So if you're interested in this review and comparison, 
there's that like and subscribe button down below. But anyway, if anyone has any more questions about a G10 build surface on here, I absolutely love it. I'm so glad I did it. But anyway, that wraps up this video. Go out there, create something amazing today. I'll see you in the next video. Oh, 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 o